contrary to the belief, there's no truth to the rumor. The table topics is a dreaded portion. Table topics are topics we have at a table. Most of the time with a lot of beer and some other funny stuff, right? So as far as I'm concerned, table topics is the entertainment portion in this organization. And let's see where that goes today. By the way, I'm doing presentation mastery round two. I finished it the first time around and I'm doing it again. All right. Level three, active listening. Again, I like being a maverick. Contrary to the truth, being host, MC, or performer is not about being the star. It's about having the ability to make everybody else a star. Let's see how that happens. Now, here's the name of the game. We hear about idioms. And many people get nervous like, <clears throat> how do I discuss idioms? So I like making people relaxed. Correct answers are not allowed. That is the rule of the game. You are going to say anything except anything correct. Everything you say about it should be totally wrong. Totally out of the box. And you are highly encouraged to lie because you will deliver it with a convincing face, gestures, and most particularly in humor, voice modulation. It's not about vocal variety. No, it's not. It's about voice modulation. I would like you to explain to some people who happen to be around what the idioms mean. And I will pretend that I don't. So we're sitting here in this meeting, right? And I say, hey, peeps, I don't understand idioms. Can you explain? Someone suddenly blurts out, hey, man, that's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Well, I don't want to lose an arm. I don't want to lose a leg. And if I have to negotiate, can I do two legs, no arm? Two arms, no leg? I don't know. Who wants to volunteer and explain this credibly? You may volunteer or I will volunteer. Anybody? Who is a willing victim? Anna, would you make a suggestion, please? Yeah, Anna's gone. Oh my gosh. No, nope, I'm here. Philip, you're going to take this one. Explain arm and a leg, losing an arm and a leg. Okay. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg, Philip. It's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Everyone knows that that idiomatic expression came back, uh, came from way back when the surgeons did not understand germ theory. And uh, whatever surgery you went in for, you would almost always lose an arm or a leg. That's the truth. You're waiting for green. <laughs> oh, sir, that, that wasn't 30 seconds? This is no. so slow. Still not getting green. This is the longest 30 seconds. Hey, there we go. All right. Remember, germ theory, it's for real. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you for that visual aid. There you go. And I'm very sure that Philip did his extensive global research and you all better believe him. Actually, in his endeavor to find the strange definitions of these idioms, he went out on a wild goose chase. And I'm so sure the next person knows what that was all about. Because I don't know if you got geese where you are, but he did it. He went out on a wild goose chase. Explain how this happened. Who wants to do that? <laughs> Anna, can you be my partner here? Yeah, I will do it. Or Osiris, did you want to go on a wild goose chase? Yeah, I can take it. Uh, I live in Redwood Shores area, and here we have more. We have a lot of geese, a lot. So I feel instead of um, chasing geese, geese are chasing us. 
So it's the opposite here where geese are after humans. A lot of geese keep coming to our lawns. They keep flying or even with their heavy bodies, they still go on flying and come to our lawns, poop, mark their territory. And we try to scare them, but no, they own this place. And probably rightly so. They were here before. With that, I'll give give back to um, Tabletop Vivian. My goodness gracious. I wonder what people are going to do if they actually are going to be able to catch a goose. Or do you keep a pet goose? That's for you to tell me. It's another story for another day. But then again, I tried going out on a wild goose chase myself. And just when I was ready to catch one, it suddenly rained cats and dogs. So I had geese, cats, and dogs. Thank goodness it didn't train horses and cows. Can you explain that to me? Anna, help me here. Cats and dogs. Training of cats and dogs purely means that you're going to be covered in fur. This is when you go to work, you don't realize that your whole back is covered in fur, and they tell you, you must have been in the cats and dogs ring because you're covered in fur. And you don't realize, you, you turn around, you can't see yourself. But when you get home and you sit down, all of a sudden you realize, they must be, I must be getting the cats and dogs rain inside my house. And because I did not come in the house this way, but now I'm covered in all of this fur. And there tends, it doesn't matter if you have white cats, black cats, gray cats, or white dogs, speckled dogs, beagles, they will rain their fur on you. And that is the meaning, true meaning of raining cats and dogs. <sighs> My goodness gracious. Now, imagine what the rest of the family thought when Anna was explaining what happened. They were like, Anna, what have you been smoking or drinking? Pull yourself together. Typically, Anna, high IQ. Uh, uh, uh. She tried to pull herself together. Who can explain what was she doing? Pulling herself together. Who wants to explain that and help me understand? Yes, Philip. Well, obviously, this is going back to that whole cost you an arm and a leg thing. That, see, I got it. I saw that. I saw that laugh, Vivian. Thank you very much. Because when they've taken your arms and legs, because germ theory is true, and you've lost your arms and legs, where do you go? You go to the arm and leg store. You buy your arm, you buy your leg, and you reattach, and everyone calls that pulling yourself together. Everyone knows that. And I'm still waiting for my timer. So go ahead and throw those rotten tomatoes. Stretch it out. Tom, Tom's had it with me. But I tell you what, the timer's got it in for me tonight. Okay. You tell her that she's got to be in your speech, and then she does this to you. Thank you. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. You know, Philip's on a roll. So just when I, I've begun to understand all this stuff about arm and leg, someone said, Vivian, you better stop before things get out of hand. And I said, there's nothing in my right hand or my left hand. There's stop accusing me. Not, what's getting out of hand? Can someone help me understand this? Anna, tell me who wants to do that. Randy. Yeah, I knew you were going to call me for this one because, well, you know, things get out of hand a lot around me. Now, of course, the, the, the main thing to think about when you're talking about something getting out of hand, well, what is in your hand? That's the, that's the important thing. It's obviously something like 
a leash or something like you get a hold on something you've heard people say get a hold on some of yourself or and that's usually what happens when you're pulling everything back together you're getting a hold on yourself well if things are getting out of hand that means that things aren't getting pulled back together so maybe those arms and legs that you thought were being all nice and coordinating you thought you were pulling them back together in the right places and you never know what happens you know okay you've seen like thing in the adams family imagine your hands and your arms and your feet and they're all just kind of like walking away from you and that's what happens when things get out of hand suddenly you have all these pieces of body parts and they're walking away and you can't even chase after them because they've taken your legs with them as well so when they get out of hand Things really get out of here. Now, table top express. And last weekend, things really got out of hand. I went fishing, and just when I thought I caught a nice one, it got out of hand. It slipped away. And then Randy said, Oh, hi, Vivian. Look over there. You've got bigger fish to fry. Bigger fish to fry? Who? Oh, what? I don't fry fish. Anna, why did he tell me that? Tom is going to answer this question because he's a fly fisherman. <clears throat> Who's going to answer it? Tom. Oh, me. Tom the professor. Me, the professor. Tom the professor. You know, Bigger fish to fry. You know, this actually uh, stems back from, believe it or not, uh, early, the, the, during the Greek, Greek philosophers uh, came up with this idiomatic term, bigger fish to fry. They would always go down to the, the waterfront, the Athenian waterfront, and where all the, the uh, old fishermen would be out coming in from uh, their, their boats and they'd always bring in these little sardine type size fish. And uh, one day uh, Socrates uh, walked down from the, the, uh, the hillside, looking at all these sardines just jumping around on the beach. And he said, with his great wisdom, everybody stopped to listen. When Socrates speaks, people listen. He said, gentlemen, please ignore the sardines, please. Look at the boat. Look at that big, big fish that's sitting on top of the boat. We got bigger fish to fry. And so that term went all the way through history, but it originated from the soccer Socrates and his wisdom about looking at the small sardines. While everyone else was focused on the sardines, there was a greater vision, a greater focus for these fishermen and it was the bigger fish left on the boat, ready to be fried. Thank you. I wonder what that fish tasted like. Okay, Anna, how many minutes do we have? I think uh, we can take one more. All right. So figure out who wants to do this because after everything said and done, and I know that was a strange way to explain idioms, let's make sure that as far as this is concerned for table topics and timing included, that we all see eye to eye. Now, we all speak English. You heard me, eye to eye. So why do we still have two eyes open? Does it mean for the next person who's gonna talk, we're all gonna have to go like this? Because it's about seeing eye. I, I did not say eyes to eyes. I said eye to eye. So, Anna, I see Randy and I see the rest of you. Who wants to explain eye to eye? Peter, can you take this one? Or Randy, are you going to do it? Oh, I, I, I wanted to do it. Okay, Peter, please do it. Yes. So back in the day, when uh, people were really terrified of this rare ph phenomenon called cooties. What are cooties, you ask? It's this really dangerous disease between men and women. And because of this disease, they weren't able to kiss or stick their tongues in each other's mouths. 
So what they would do instead is they would get really close to each other and they'd close one eye and they'd stick their eye. They'd just go eye to eye. And that was the equivalent of fornication back in the day to get around the cooties because cooties were just so dangerous during the bubonic plague. It was so bad, in fact, that they had to get a bunch of cats and wipe out the rat population because they were just terrified that the rats were running over the bodies of males and running over to female. Excuse me, sorry, cooties always come from girls. So they were running over the, the bodies of females and then touching the men. And everyone was getting cooties. It was a cooties outbreak. And that was also the source of the bubonic plague. It's a good thing to know. And that, Vivian is what I to I means. Thank you. Oh, my goodness gracious. I would like to thank all of you because I feel that my IQ went up by 200 points. Like, what would I do without you? I am just so glad that I invited myself to this club, whether you like it or yes. Huh? Like it or yes? What kind of a choice was that? I'm going to quit while I'm ahead and I'm going to zip it Sending you love and hugs from Manila. <laughs>